Coming up, I build an entire village for piglins on the nether roof. I also make an efficient bartering farm using Create as well as updating my gold farm. And I build an elevator that goes all the way through the nether. Let's create. Piglins! You said that last time! Yeah, but this time it's not the zombie variety, we need the normal variety. And speaking of the zombie variety, this farm has been running incredibly well. I built it in the last episode and I've been AFK pretty much all night and it's been working perfectly. It never ever stops. Although there are a couple of improvements I can make. First of all, we get a lot of magma cubes on here and that can be resolved by just putting another layer at the top that's not magma blocks, that's not spawnable, so we can sort that out. And another thing that I I can sort out is the swords in this killing system here because they're just diamond and I can improve them with my hyper enchanting system but the magma cubes are causing a bit of a problem because they fall down there they land down here and well they basically make a big mess of everything so I do need to sort that out for sure and in terms of what we're getting we've got over 111,000 rotten flesh and why is that useful well we can turn it into organic compost we can also cook with it to make dog food and that's about it really and it turns out this is a diamond farm although five diamonds in about six hours is not really all that great really but we're getting a little bit of iron a little bit of leather some diamonds and even some diamond shards so i'll take all of these things i even got some netherite shards and we got a handful of arrows too but how much gold did we get and how much xp well we need to go and find out don't we and we've got 190 gold and 3000 xp well, that's not as much as i was expecting and that's because the nuggets of experience actually overflowed the storage drawers so i've took them all out put them in my inventory and then i'm going to put them somewhere else the gold has all been used turning this netherite scrap into another 5000 netherite so we've got plenty of that in fact we've got so much netherite now we've got a over 10 stacks of netherite blocks so that means yes i can definitely make a beacon from netherite if i wanted to and i just might so coming back to my library where my hyper enchanting setup is we've almost got a full tank of xp here so adding all of those nuggets of xp into here might not be the best idea but the real reason i'm here is i want to make a handful more swords and i want them all to be netherite swords and yes i could have just upgraded the ones in the gold farm but why not have more when we've got plenty of resources and these are going to need unbreaking four on as well as looting for and i'd also very much like them to have smite on as well and i don't know if i've actually got a smite book in here no so i need to get my hands on one of those and that's kind of crazy because my original sword does have smite four on it but i guess i must have got that from an enchanting table so i think we need an enchanting table and some books and where am i going to get books from in this library i just don't know now we've still got a couple of spare rooms in this library so i might as well use these and we'll set up a little enchantment station in here and we'll make it a big one. And now my little enchanting setup's complete. We've got an anvil, a grindstone, a box with some books in, a box full of lapis, and an enchantment table. So let's see if we can get ourselves some smite five. I don't think either of those are that. And now I need more levels. It'd be really useful to have an XP tank in here full of levels. And there we go, a little bit later, we've now got a tank, we've got a whole bunch of nuggets of XP in there, that's all going in there, so that means I can stand here, wind that handle, and give myself a whole bunch of levels. Good, right, okay. Let's carry on enchanting these books. No, no. Well, I've been rolling books for a little while, and so far I've had no luck. I've managed to get one Smite 4 book, but I need two of those to make Smite 5. I was really hoping I might come across some Depth Strider as well while I'm here, because I need that too. But so far, no luck. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. At last, Smite 4 again. Excellent. Still no Depth Strider though, so I'm wondering if that's like a lower level enchantment. And I know you can arrange bookcases in certain ways to try and force certain enchantments, but I'm not too interested in that. What I am going to do is give this thing all of my levels back, eventually. Combine these two Smite books to make Smite 5. And now I can go and teach this to one of my amazing blaze burners. You, sir, need a book. And here we go, let's do this. And of course, the final enchantment these swords need is sweeping edge and there we go those are some pretty nice swords there's one more thing i need to do here and that is to enchant the helmet and the boots i made in the last video with mending and i do happen to have a couple of mending books so let's just throw that one on there and that one on there and now those can get nicely mended when i just wiggle this a bit there we go lovely 
So the next thing I need to do is come in here and turn all of this off, I think. I think we've got enough netherite for now. Coming underground, all of the liquid is being pumped into my power station through this. So if I was to replace that with a clutch and stick a redstone link on it in receive mode, well, let's give that some netherite. Then I suppose I could come over here, throw some case in between these, put another one on there with some of those, and then we'll just put a lever on. And now I should be able to stop the entire power station from going. And with that stopped, the gold should start to accumulate in there from our gold farm. And we're going to be using that gold to feed our new piglin friends, which obviously we don't have yet. So we've still got all of that to do. But before we do any of that, I need to hop all the way up to the top and give these swords to that deployer. So a little while later, I have now upgraded this farm completely, adding in a full glass roof over it to try and prevent the magma cubes from spawning. And I've added in the netherite swords down in the killing chamber below. So there's no time like the present to test this thing out. Let's hit that piglin there. Hopefully he'll run towards me and fall down this hole. And hopefully with our new swords, they're going to get... Wow. They should get one-shotted with Smite 5. So Smite 6 is a bit overkill, really. If you're enjoying this video, then consider subscribing and like the video because it really helps me out. Well, I would say this is a roaring success. So piglins then, I want to make somewhere nice for them. A little piglin village. Not like this piglin village here, which is not very nice. Oh jeez, I forgot about you horrible mosquitoes. No thank you. But yeah, th this isn't, th this just doesn't look very nice for the piglins. It looks all sort of worn down. Will you stop it? Stop stucking my blood. Oh, another one. Yeah, the piglins don't really want to live where there's giant mosquitoes interfering with them all the time and there's horrible, nasty, black stone, not very nice looking places to be. So we're going to build them a village. And we're going to do that up here on the nether roof where we've got our big old hole and our big old portal. And I thought a little village surrounding this portal and this hole could look quite nice and be a good place for a bartering farm. So I guess without further ado, I better get cracking. And in order to get cracking, I made myself this fancy little workshop just in the hole below the nether roof we dug out. And that gives there's all this space up here to work on. Well, slowly but surely, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. We've got this tower that's now surrounding our hole that we come up through in the middle, and at some point that's going to have an elevator in it that'll be able to go up there. I moved the nether portal over here and made that into a little engine shed so that when our train comes through, it parks in there. It doesn't really, it goes into the overworld. And I put some gravel slabs down on the track, and I blended this into the size here, and I put some fence around it so that when we've got some free-range piglins in here, they're not going to end up on the tracks and get hit by the train. Speaking of the train, it seems to have stopped. Where's my train it's here and my baby piglin is dead where's my piglin gone piglin well that sucks but there's nothing in here to kill him i wonder if he was taking damage every time he went through the portal <laughs> but fortunately for us we have a brand new candidate here waiting to get on this lovely train come here you you are now the train driver Get on that seat. Sit on it, please. Come on. Oh, there we go. Now he's got on. Excellent. And he's got a schedule. And now you can resume that schedule. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the height of the... Oops. So you killed the driver. And no, it wasn't me. I didn't kill him. It just died a bit. You killed him. I didn't. And there we go. That's much taller now. Let's put the track back together and put the gravel slap on there. Plus, bro, don't take damage. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Anyway, right, it's time to crack on with this build. Obviously, this isn't really a village. It's more of just a big dirt patch with some walls and a tower. The piglins are, of course, going to need houses to live in and little ponds and things. You can't have water in nether. No, but I can have other fluids. So I guess it's probably time I place a few more blocks, add a few more things like that in, and think about how I'm going to include a bartering system into all of that. Now, if I remember correctly, a piglin bartering system looks a little bit like this. You've got a dispenser, you've got a hopper and a barrel or some 
sort of container. Your piglin stands on here, right? ideally on some sort of carpet or something so he doesn't get stuck in the hopper. You put gold in the dispenser and then you kick off the system. And if an item goes in there, that should encourage that dispenser to drop more gold to the piglin. So let's imagine that I'm the piglin for a second. That gold's going to come out of there. I'm going to decide I want to barter something. So I'm going to chuck it down and then I should get another piece of gold. And I'm going to think about this piece of gold and then I'm going to chuck an item down and then I should get another one. But what if I chuck a whole stack of items down? Do I get another piece of gold immediately or does it wait till it's gone out the hopper? Well, it looks to me like it's going to wait until it's all gone out of the hopper, which can slow things down a little bit. Should pop out any second now. There we go. But that's not necessarily a problem because it gives the piglin plenty of time to think about what he's got. However, if I didn't want to do it that way, I could just bring a plank there instead of this one here, pop a little bit of redstone dust down. And now if I'm a piglin, let's just start this by that. I get my gold, I throw something in there, and then I get another piece of gold immediately. And this works now as soon as I put it in. The problem with this design is though, if the piglin puts a big stack in, it's going to give him gold back and he might finish thinking about that and give us more items while there's already items in the hopper, which means we're not going to get any more gold. And that's a problem. So I think the original design's probably better, but we need to do it without any visible redstone. And that can be achieved, all thanks to Create, with our favourite little redstone links. So we can put a redstone link down there. We can put another one on top of the dispenser. And now, if I'm a little piglin, let's see what happens. I get my gold. I like that bit of gold. I'm going to give somebody a present. Let's give somebody 16 of these red dye. And I get the gold back immediately. And that means that if the piglin throws a whole bunch of stuff in there, well, it's going to wait for the hopper. So that's not really ideal. However, the problem here isn't necessarily the setup. It's the fact that this is a hopper. And hoppers can only transfer one item at once. But again, with our favourite mod, Create, we've got these, which can transfer 16 items at once. And we've got Smart Shoots that can transfer 64 at once. However, again, one of these shoots will actually process a whole stack at a time if you throw a whole stack in. They'll only do 16 at a time if you're like feeding it with a conveyor or something. So we don't need smart shoots, we just need these. But how then are we going to get a comparator signal out? Well, I'm pretty sure I can take a comparator signal directly out of that shoot. Let's just find out if I throw in a stack of items in there. No, I can't. Can a smart observer give us an output? So let's stick a redstone lamp behind there and then throw an item in and it goes on. What if we throw a whole bunch of items in? It goes on. So we can use smart observers instead of the comparator. And now this system just looks like this. It's quite simple. It does need to be raised another block off the floor and it does mean accessing the barrels quite difficult. But we're not going to be using barrels. We're actually going to be using storage drawers. So we're going to be having storage drawer controller slaves there. And then I guess coming out the side of that, we'll have a bunch of trim running underground. But let's see if it works. Works. If I stand on here, I guess I need to activate this at least once. Give myself a bit of gold. I've decided I quite like that gold and want to give something in return. So I'm going to drop an item down into this chute. And I yep, there we go. I've got another piece of gold. So this should work. And if we need to put a delay in, that'll be nice and easy as well. So now I need to build a bunch of these, make them all look nice, and then build a bunch of piglins' houses too. So I'm going to be very busy for the next few minutes. So I better play that music. And here we are, our little piglin paradise, complete with houses, a big old tower that's got a netherite and gold flag on it. We've got the marketplace bartering system down here with piles of gold and netherite around that. We've got a few of these piglin houses around here. I've updated this station to use the same type of roof blocks, and we've even got a little wood next to a stable so the piglins can ride whatever piglins ride. Over this side, we've got a river of gold, which is actually just honey. And of course, the piglins are growing some carrots and potatoes 
potatoes because they need something to eat. And the majority of this area has been made using these layers, which is from my FXNT Bits and Bobs mod that I made myself. And there's another block that I've used in here as well that I haven't even told you about, and that is this thatch for the roofs, which I'll talk about in a minute. But before I talk about that, these block layers are actually now made using the stone cutter, and there are now over 40 different types of block layer that I've added to the game. And why am I using these instead of frame blocks? Well, frame blocks are quite limited in their sizes. If you want to step up, you go from a floorboard to a trapdoor to a slab to a full block, and that's not a very nice gradient. Whereas these layers go up two pixels at a time, which means you can make a full gradient all the way up to a full block. And when you reach a full block height, it actually just turns back into the block you made it out of. And these just go on the stone cutter and you get eight at a time. Pretty handy. And I have actually decorated the insides of these buildings as well. So each one's got a little kitchen, some flower pot and some herb pots. We've got a little sink and cookers and sofas. And I've gone with the gold and netherite theme as much as I can. And just quickly running into each one, you can see the difference. This tiny house has got a sofa and a table and a bookshelf. This house is slightly bigger, so this one's got a farmer's delight kitchen with some potatoes and some more bookshelves and a desk and a sofa this one's got farmer's delight in it and it's got a little storeroom and this small one's very similar to the other small one and finally this bigger one over here has got a little bit of a kitchen in it as well so plenty for the piglins to be cooking their food and making their potatoes and their carrots and even chilling out and why is there no beds you can't have beds in the nether they go boom so this thatch then why didn't i just use hay bales or the chipped versions of hay bales well thatch is different so let's come into the sunshine to talk about it in the real world thatch's main ingredient is water reeds and when it's first made it's quite light and vibrant and over time it tends to get quite dark and desaturated because it ages so i've made three variants of it we've got thatch we've got aged thatch and we've got old thatch and these will actually age over time a little bit like copper i'll show you that in detail in a minute we can use honeycomb on them to stop them aging if we want to although if they're in a frame block they're not going to age anyway but they are rotated so you can get the thatch going in different directions but there aren't any water reeds in minecraft and there's one item that we hardly have any use for at all and if you look closely at thatch it kind of just looks like a bundle of sticks and what item gives you a bundle of sticks when you break it that is of course dead bushes well it gives you a stick so i've made it so thatch is craftable from dead bushes so here in my test world i've put out a big layer of copper and a big layer of thatch and you'll see they age slightly differently and that's because i've had to create my own aging process for this this. And while the copper does gather in groups like it is doing on the right hand side of the screen, the thatch all ages from the edges, slowly filling in from the sides towards the middle. And because there's only three stages of thatch, I've made it so it takes about the same amount of time to fill in the entire area as it does for copper to fully fill in. And thatch is actually going to be a key ingredient in our diamond making process a little bit later in this phase. But enough of that for now, let's get back to the nether and figure out how we're going to do this bartering farm then. So this has five slots for five piglins. We've got droppers at the top rather than dispensers because we didn't need to waste all of those bows. And surrounding those, we've got these chutes and there's no chutes in the corner. So I'm really hoping the piglins will either drop to the side or to the front. But it ain't going to work if there's no piglins in it. And it's also not going to work because none of this is linked up to any form of storage system. There are storage drawers going into the top to feed gold in when we actually get some gold. And I was thinking we could put the actual storage drawers along the front here so that we can see what the piglins have got. The only slight problem with that is that means destroying these blocks here which isn't too much of a problem but i can't destroy those because they're shoots so i think it actually makes more sense to have our storage system in here where the elevator is going to be although there's probably not going to be that much room to have it but maybe we could just have a wall full of storage drawers and all of the control system from there we'll be able to dump our gold in there it will get sent to the piglin farm and that way we don't have to risk our lives actually coming and seeing these piglins so i'm just going to throw a whole bunch of drawers down here for now and that trim that i've just put in should be just about there there we go so we can take this all the way across to over there and link it all up and making ourselves a little hidey hole underneath our little area here we can see we've got these shoots coming down into the ground we've got the observers facing them so we need our trim to come along to here we need it in between all of these shoots we need some of these draw controller slaves at the bottom of each one of the shoots and now all of those are connected with those storage drawers and the system should be just about good to go i think but of course it's not going to work at all unless we've got piglins in it 
and I could go down underground and find a whole bunch of piglins to bring them over here. But I've got another idea. And that involves going back to our gold farm. And that's because this gold farm is in the nether wastes and piglins will spawn in the nether wastes. But before we do anything, I'm going to need another mega torch because I don't want things spawning right now. And I'm just going to throw that down here and then make a big old platform of netherrack. And I think that should be about big enough as a little spawning platform. But now I need something else. I need seats. And I'm going to need a lot of seats. Let's make a whole bunch of white seats. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a seat every other block like this. And my idea here is, although I've got no idea if this is going to work, is that when things spawn in, they're going to pathfind around a bit and they're going to accidentally find themselves on one of these seats. And now all of the seats are in place. I need to put some fences around so that they don't walk off the edge of this thing away from the seats. And I should really probably think about getting myself some golden armor. Oh, I've already got some. Let's have some gold boots. And now that's all in place, we should be ready to start spawning in some piglins. Let's get rid of that mega torch, come away a little bit, allow things to start spawning, and hopefully not just get loads of gas and magma cubes or anything, apparently. Come on. I think I know why things aren't spawning. My AFK account is currently up at the top of here running this farm. So you need to go, mate. Bye, Chalk. So now if I go away and despawn all of the piglins that are on the roof and then come back, over here we should hopefully get things spawning on my little patch of netherrack they're the wrong type though we don't want normal zombie piglins we want the other ones and none of them seem to be pathfinding onto the seats well this hasn't worked very well at all and here it is my amazing piglin picker upping machine and what i'm gonna do is put a torch down there get rid of that assembler and hopefully that's just gonna go across there and pick up a bunch of piglins as it goes past it worked oh they fell off again when it stopped oh that's annoying the baby one didn't know oh the fences the fences are causing the problem Problem. and now they're old oh, now they're all outside the fences okay well that's fine i just need to move it forward a little bit there we go that should be better they can't get out of the fences now and the good thing about this little device here is when i want it to stop i can just get rid of a redstone torch and i can decide right which of you idiots do i actually want to keep well i don't want you you're the wrong type of piglin and they can't fight back because they're on their seats yeah, we got loads now, and we've got the right type of piglins as well. Oh, this is good. So what I just need to do is get this thing moving so that it's going to pick up as many things as possible, deal with the things that I don't want, and then we should hopefully get the things that I do want. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. And now we've got a bunch of piglins that we can steal. And hopefully, because I'm wearing my gold, they're not going to be irritated by me. I can just pick these guys up and take them over to their new home. This is wonderful. And you are going to be my first little test subject for our bartering farm. Please stand in there. Where did you go? Huh. Did you go underneath it? Did you go in the chute? Where did you go? Did you go out the back? Hello? It just is, It's not even showing on the map. That's weird. Let's grab another one and see if I can do that again. Okay, if I put you down there, you've just you've disappeared. Is it because I've got a torch over here to stop things spawning? I didn't think that despawned things. It hasn't done previously. Uh, let's get rid of that for now then. Hopefully a load of things won't spawn. I've done my best to spawn proof this area, but it's not perfect. Well, let's just grab our little friend here, take them over there and see if we have the same problem. In fact, before we get there, let's just pop them down here. That's fine. Now, if I was to put a torch down and then pop one down, ah, it disappears. It's, it's the torch. So I only need the torch gone while they're there because the game thinks they're spawning in when I place them. Right, I need a bunch more piglins then. Oh my goodness, we've got a bunch of them now. They're all the wrong ones, but oh no, we've got some that are right. Excellent. There we go. We've got a piglin. All right, let's first of all do a manual test. Have a bit of have a bit of gold. No, you don't want the gold. But you're a piglin. You both take the gold, mate. What if I put it there? Ah, there we go. Now he's took it. Are you going to throw items out and drop them all over the place? Oh, well, I suppose I could maybe use a slab. Will we get away with it if I put a slab there? So here, have another piece of gold and try that again. Okay, fine. We'll have glass at the front of each one instead of a thing. Okay, so now all of that's in place. We've got our piglin. If I put some gold into one of these drawers here, that should disappear and it should start going straight into these. And I'm hoping it will evenly spread, although I think it's going to go in the one closest to where the system is, which should actually be this one straight above this piglin's head. If I get rid of that and look in there, yeah, that's working because I just dropped an item down there and now he's going to start bartering. But he's going to give it to me instead of that because I need to put the glass on there. But well, that's good. I've got one more thing I need to do. And that is to get a bunch more of these redstone links and put them all on the wall. Ah, the wall like this. And the reason I need these is to kickstart the system. Should the piglins ever stop for any reason or if I add more gold and they haven't had any, that'll just fire a piece of gold out of each of the, one of the dispensers. However, it's not going to do that with a lever. That's just going to lock things on. So let's just use buttons instead. And now if I fire that, that should give that piglin some gold. There we go. It's working. Excellent. And now he's thrown his items in. He's got more gold. Oh, yes, this is all working rather wonderfully. Do it again. 
Yes, perfect. Ah, until it falls on the side there. So we need shoots on these bits as well. But I was just wondering, instead of using that glass there, what if instead I did that? Is that going to work or is he going to throw it through it? It does work. It went behind him. Oh, wonderful. So we should be getting a bunch of stuff coming through here now. We are. Oh, wow. We've got spectral arrows, fire charges, nether bricks, blackstone, string. Well, with this one being a roaring success, I don't see any reason why we can't get more piglins in here. I need that torch back. I'm going to have to get those piglins in here fast and then I can put that torch back down and stop things like this from happening because you're going to trample all me carrots and me spuds. Get off. You know how hard it is planting carrots and spuds in the nether? There's no light. you got to put torches and lanterns and things everywhere. You're just the menace. You're a pain in the... So I've just gone and got my second piglin, but of course my first one's gone because I didn't name them. So I'm going to need my name tags. And just to keep things nice and simple, we're going to call all of the piglins Jeff, because I think that's the perfect name for a piglin. There you go, Jeff. So a little bit of backwards and forwards in later. We've now got a whole bunch of piglins living in our little piglin village. I've put a few of them in the houses. I've put a few of them just dotted around and they're all called Jeff. If you would like to adopt a piglin, you can do by suggesting the best piglin names in the comments and the best names will get put on the piglins and then you'll be able to consider that piglin your piglin. Hurrah! And we've got a full piglin bartering farms with the piglins as well. My only concern here is that these shoots are around the sides. If they do happen to drop on the edges, they're not going to go in. And I can't actually add any more shoots into this system because these ones are in the way. So the only way I can get around that if it becomes a problem would be to make these full blocks instead of fences, which I kind of don't want to do because I like the openness of this. So now I just need a whole bunch of gold and I need a whole bunch because I need to fill every single one of those dispensers before this system will start backing up so there we go got a whole bunch in there now as you can see through a little bit of testing we are getting a few different items in here now so i've added some more drawers because it was actually full in which case we should activate the system give each one of the piglins a gold ingot and see what happens they should all be bartering now you're not bartering the rest of them are though why is my red one not doing it it's got seven gold ingots in the chute the dispenser's full that looks like it's set up correct Anyway, the rest of them are all really having a good time doing a whole bunch of bartering. I just don't know why that last one isn't. Anyway, let's see what we're getting now that we've got all that going on. Wow, a whole bunch of stuff. We're getting ancient hog shoes. That's just what I wanted. Brian obsidian, fire resistance, iron nuggets. Oh yeah, boots. Ender pearls is good. I think we might need to do some filtering here to get rid of a few of the things we don't want. But we'll worry about that once this gets full. Okay, we're going to give you pink dye instead of red dye and see if that solves the problem. Uh, is it giving him an ingot? Yes, it's giving him an ingot is he gonna get another one though when he drops that item yes okay he's working then ah and there we go we've got our first problem this one's dropped string on here he also dropped some soul sand on oh geez yeah we're gonna have to put solid blocks everywhere and what I think I'm going to do is just put more glass along these bits like this, and then they're not going to be able to get it onto the wrong bit, and it just looks a little bit more uniform altogether. Now they can't throw it anywhere it's not supposed to go. And now we should have a fully functional piglin bartering farm. This is wonderful. Speaking of piglins, they've been dropping me off a bunch of items now. I've put in quite a lot of gold, I've been getting through it, we've got a few things, and we've been getting these hog shoes. And I don't know what they do. There's no crafting recipe for hog shoes, but they can be enchanted. And I cannot put them on my feet. They will not go on. They also don't go on my leggings or my chest plate slot. So I can only assume you're supposed to put them on a different mob from Alex's mods. And if I look through the book, I can't find any reference to them at all. But surely horses. Horses make sense. But people Piglins don't ride horses. Piglins ride striders. And that's why we've got stables so that we can put striders in it. And I've got a way of getting striders into here. I've got a warp plate. I'm going to pop that down. I'm going to put this one in there. And now I'm going to go find some striders. And after flying around for a couple of minutes, I've found a few candidates. We've got one here, one over there, one there, and one there. And that one looks like it's a lot closer to the land than the others. Ah! And I was going to say I'm nether protected now, but I haven't got my back tank on, so I can't do that. But what I can do is put that warp plate there put that in there grab a bit of fungus and hope it's that no no gas don't blow up my thing stop it no no stop it i'm trying to catch striders here now are they going to come to me for this fungus do they do that is it the wrong type of yes he is come on this way this way i guess i probably need to put him some blocks down so let's just throw some nether rack down at this point here can i get underneath there no hmm. in that case let's equip my back tank 
take my gold boots off and do a little bit of swimming. And hopefully, no, I still can't see underwater. People told me it was my brightness mod that did that, but it's not. And the other thing I've realized about swimming in lava is that these diving boots are not ever so useful because they suck you down to the bottom. And it turns out you don't actually need the diving boots to go in the lava and be protected. You can just use standard netherite boots and then you don't sink. You can actually swim in the lava. Well, anyway, I've got a little platform here for our little strider guy. Come on, little strider guy. I need you to come stand on this teleporter, please. If you could just walk this way nice and quickly. No messing about. Thank you. Onto that teleporter pad there. That's it. Just stay there. And any second now. Why are you not going? Do I go? I go. Oh, there we go. I got him in. Don't go back again. Don't go back again. Just go. No, I don't. 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 Jeez. Why don't you pick him up? Oh, yeah. I should have just picked him. Oh, I fed him now. Didn't want to feed him. All right. Anyway, I'm going to go get you some friends. So in the last episode, I mentioned that I couldn't see under lava. And a bunch of you said it was because of my brightness mod. It's not that. Other people said I needed to drink night vision potions in order to see under the water. But it's not that either. But I'm sure there'll be something in this pack that allows me to see under the lava properly. I just don't know what it is. Just come on a little. There you go. Just stay. There we go. So now my little striders should be in their little stable one of, where's the other one gone it's here and i should probably name tag these as well just in case these go missing but let's just put you in there and these striders are going to be called jeff there you go jeff and there's jeff if you would like to adopt a strider then please leave a comment with the best name for a strider and one of these lovely striders could be yours now then my little strider friends can you wear hog shoes no jeff you disappoint me in which case we need to go back to our snowy area and i'm gonna go over to the farm where my horses live and i'm gonna see if they like ancient hog shoes Shh, no i don't want to pick him up i want to get in his inventory there we go can i put you can you can you wear hog shoes no so what are hog shoes for if you know what hog shoes do then please do let me know because i haven't got a clue anyway we've got one last thing to do and that is to build an elevator inside of our tower on the nether roof that goes all the way down to the bottom of the nether which means an awful lot of digging all the way down as well as all of that larvary peril that lives down there we don't really want to have to deal with that so I've got a plan. You've always got a plan. I do always have a plan. Um, you should call me Planny No Tail. But I've always got a plan. Not a very good name. But it might be. It isn't. The right, first part of my plan is to remove these trap doors. And the second part of my plan is to make some mechanical drills all around here. On top of my mechanical drills, we're going to have a couple of chests. And we're also going to have a whole bunch of deployers all facing down through the drills. Which means my chests have got to move. And now I'm going to give all of those drills an item. And that could be quite tricky because they're all... Yeah, they're all, mm, I don't really think this through, did I? If I get rid of that one there, I can give that one one of those. And then I can put one of those there. And now that all of the deployers with the iron grates as their item so now i can put a bunch of chests on here put all of those iron grates into there industrial iron grate yep and now we just need a little bit of glue and now I'm going to need power. And I've been thinking about power for this area. It would be really easy to get a steam engine and power it from all of that lava right at the bottom of the nether. And that would be nice and easy to do, but I don't want to do that. See, we've got this lovely village and this lovely tower. And I think it would be really nice if one of the faces of this tower had a big old windmill on it that provided us power. Now, that's a relatively basic looking windmill sail, but hopefully it will spin. Give that a flick. Is it going the right way, though? I don't know which way that should spin. I mean, that kind Kind of looks right to me, but it could also be totally wrong. So now we can stick a speed controller on here. And with a bit of chain drive, we can bring that over pretty much to the middle of this room here. And eventually we're going to have that power in an elevator pulley. But right now we're not going to have it powering that because we need it to power a rope pulley. So let's stick that on there. That's already going down. That's good. Let's stick it on full speed. And that should, there we go, start sending that down through the ground. And that's just going to dig a big old hole. And what's really good is it should place the grates first which means that if it gets to lava or anything like that it'll destroy the lava rather than going through it and it should also make us a nice area around it why is that going out to the side oh i did my deploy is totally wrong hmm. so what we need to do is actually flip these ones on the side the other way up so that it places them a book. Let's try that again, shall we? Pop that back on there, give it mini speed, and hopefully now it's going to create, yes, a nice area around itself as it goes down. So now as it goes through the lava, it should block that lava off, stopping it getting into the elevator shaft. And it turns out I haven't recorded all of the last few clips that I was going on about. We've dug the hole all the way down to the bottom, and I've just climbed up this rope ladder to get back out again. So we're all finished, job done. And with these last few great blocks on this elevator, 
elevator shaft here we've now got a lovely elevator shaft that we can put an elevator in wonderful and there it is we've got a cage that's going to take us to the bottom of the world everything should be glued together we've got some controls there i've thrown in a redstone contact just below this block here at that level which should turn into an elevator contact as soon as i put this elevator pulley up here extend it to attach to that and then maybe just slow this down a bit so that we don't blow ourselves to pieces actually going up and down there but it's not going to go anywhere because there's only one floor so what i actually need to do now is go down this shaft and find a good spot to get to the next floor and i think that's going to be pretty much all the way down at lava level if we can manage it or will you stop it lava facing totally the wrong direction been round the right way stop it there we go put that back in don't oh, not that one that one jeez we should be able to call the elevator down to this by giving that a signal it is it's coming excellent now will the door automatically open when it gets here i've put a normal door on it so it might not oh it's already open there we go we've now got an elevator that goes all the way down to lava level all the way from the top and look at that it looks amazing it looks pretty dangerous and scary but it also looks amazing and it would seem this door doesn't work at all on the elevator now that it's a contraption so i guess that door's just for show so the last thing to do is add my waystone back up here we'll put that warp plate down as well so that we can get back to the netherite farm nice and quickly and we'll see if we've actually got any gold in here my afk account wasn't actually afk for very long at all so yeah we got a few thousand that's not too bad let's take as much as we can and we're going to hop back over there and use this to fill up the piglin bartering farm and they should have been busy they are they're still going i can't believe they're still going but they are looks like this one no he's still going as well wow okay well what a success even hopping between dimensions those piglins have been carrying on trading even though they're not chunk loaded and now we've got a whole bunch of resources we've got ender pearls blackstone spectral arrows nether brick loads of leather gravel obsidian crying obsidian quartz iron oh we've got everything we need but i just want to know what these hog shoes do driving me mad 